this is a spot I wanted to come to. What? A robin. It's fall. That robin's following us. Yeah, Julie, Julie's scared of robins. I'm not scared of robins. And what are you looking worried for? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just aware of what happened the first time I met a robin in Scotland. You pushed me down a hill. I didn't push you down a hill. You fell. Yeah, Julie fell coming off a mountain once, and she landed and broke her leg, and the robin came down and landed on her hand and just sat there. St. Columbus Chapel and St. Columbus Cave were excavated by Marion Campbell in 1960, I think it was. Thereabouts, wasn't it? Yeah, 1960. Well, Marion Campbell really didn't leave our guy very much through her lifetime. To be honest, I can see why, because that's where we live and it is quite stunning. Um, but as a child, she did go to school. Um, she was sent off to Edinburgh um, to do a bit of schooling. But her father used to read her Kipling and all, right. all the all the big writers. Um, and when she did come back from school, she pretty much self-taught her um, all, all the skills that she knew. Um, it was when she was at school in Edinburgh that she met Mary. Mm -hmm. Sandman. Mary Sandman, yeah. Um, who we will talk about later. The two of them formed quite a friendship. But uh, when she was young, and obviously living in the castle, um, over the summer holidays, her friend Mary was from Jura. And the two of them used to communicate with each other across the sound of Jura with torches. They had a Morse code. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So even at an early age, she had quite a few skills because her and Mary were having great conversations across the Sound of Jura, no doubt confusing the ships. Yeah, I was about to say you're on a boat sailing past when somebody's needing help. No, they're not. They're probably just chatting about where we're going tomorrow. Must have been very confusing. Yeah. To see them. Anyway, <laughs> this is a site I want to come to, and it just so happens to tie in the, the sites Julie wants to visit. Uh, this is St Columbus Chapel and then St Columbus Cave. Marion Campbell inherited Kilberry Castle when she was eight years old when her father died. Um, in 1931 her cousin bought the castle. They died in 1938 and she inherited the castle again. Um, she had been given the chance to study at Oxford University um, but it was the outbreak of war and despite Oxford saying she had one chance and she could take it, she turned down the chance and went on ahead and joined the ATS, followed by the Wrens. I'm just watching out because it's a bit muffy here. Um, and obviously learnt skills there during the war. Um, she learnt a lot of um, accountancy skills and secretarial skills that proved invaluable because when she returned to Kilberry after the war the castle was pretty much ready to be insolvent um, against her better judgment and of much pain to her she sold a lot of the farmhouses um, and crofts on the estate basically to make the place solvent again and so that she could start writing. Um, she really was quite a prolific writer and we'll discuss that as well. We are on our way up to the cave and I can assure you it's quite squelchy. Oh, I've got stuck. <laughs> this is when we find out if the boots are waterproof or not. Now this is the ruin of St Columbus Chapel. 
It wasn't actually St Columbus Chapel, he came about way before this. Uh, this is I think it's 12, 13th century, so 1200s. Um, I don't know how long it was stood, but it was initially dedicated to St John. So the fact that it's now called St Columbus Chapel is more, to be honest, I think it's to catch the tourists because this whole area's got lots of St Columba relevance and they've tried to add some to this. Though the cave, however, apparently was used by St Columba uh, and that was back in 6th century, I think, so way predating this chapel. It actually looks like part of it's been kind of repaired. Uh, I'm not sure what actually happens when it comes to repairing a very old place like this. So obviously it's a complete ruin. But, you know, for prosperity's sake they don't want the whole thing collapsing. So I don't know if they just maybe make a few small repairs just to keep it standing. Anyway, we're going to go and see the caves. If I can find Joy. Vanished again. Martin appears to be lost in transit and we would kind of need to find him because he knows all about this oh my goodness stunning cave I don't I know very little so this is St Columbus cave it's not thought that he actually lived here more that he used it as a shelter on his way elsewhere as we know his little footsteps are carved into the rock all over our guy but oh my goodness what a place we'll get down there and get the torch on it when Martin comes and in all these places a little shrine with some massive crab claws. Block fist. Oh wow. 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 Just wow. Very, very cool. Oh, here comes the font of knowledge now. Uh, we we'll need, we'll need you here so that I can turn my torch on because there's a really funky digger out the back. But it's too dark to film. I'm going to need to use my torch. Is there? Oh, right, okay. Yeah, it's uh, pretty dark, so. I'm not sure how this footage will come out, but uh, yeah, this is St Columbus Cave. It's huge. Now St Columba was in this area in the 6th century, and you pass through this area to get to Dinad and to head up to Ilna, where he formed his monastery. But apparently he stopped off here. And this was not so much a residence, but somebody would come to pray and do his monk stuff. Is that a word? Monk stuff? Anyway, hopefully you can see this. There's a, a small altar there. The altar's obviously a much later date. You see people with little offerings on top. One of the inter inter you know, interesting feature here are the crosses. I don't know if you can make this out, but there's actually four small holes there, which was this is a worn away cross. There's another one, four holes here, which was a Latin cross, uh, and there's a later one here that's been put over the place over, over the over the Latin cross. And it's a much later one. And I suppose, when I say much later, it's not that much later. It's still you know about 700 years old. There's also another interesting feature in here, if I don't 
following my posterior. Uh, there's like a bowl carved into the floor. Now, they think it was natural, but they think it would have been used as some kind of a font. It would probably gather water from the roof, I'd imagine. They have uh, excavated this site. I think it was first excavated, well, it was first investigated in the early 1800s. Uh, and then, again, early, 19, early 1900s. And it was properly excavated in the 1960s by Murray and Gamble. They excavated it down, uh, I think it was three and a half feet. And they found uh, Neolithic remains from around 800 BC. There was also evidence of uh, early ironwork from the Iron Age. Uh, they found two uh, bodies buried inside the cave and another one just outside the cave with a, like a, stone, like a stone coffin. Uh, so basically this, this cave has been in use basically for about 3,000 years. Julie pointed out earlier on some of these postals. There's postals all the way along this wall here, and they think what they were used for is to put a roof up over the altar. Well, that's the archaeologists say. I don't know, I never saw it. Have you seen my little Yes. I know Columbo wasn't a big chap, but I think you might have taken the um... No, but the postals at the bottom are across the door, the doorway, to enclose it, which is what I was going to come to next. There used to be a uh, just at the entrance here, as you can see there's a kind of two big rocks that have dropped down. There is like a natural line down here, along here, and that lines up with those post holes. And there's a larger, larger hole there that ran from there, right across the other side there, where there would have been a lintel. And that would have basically closed off the front of the cave. So it might just look like a kind of skanky, minging, wet cave now, but they've probably been quite cosy back then. Some of the other interesting things that have been found in here over the excavations were uh, there were some crockery found from, I think that was from the Bronze Age and they also found some Viking, uh, Viking scales they found but they only found them when they dug right down What? Oh, yeah, as Joey has just reminded me again even though I'm the one to research this one uh, One thing they did find in, in here was a large stone bowl which well, actually was sitting up at the altar. Uh, they believe that bowl was used as a font and the font is now in the church that we passed to get here. We've just come from there and behold another cave. <coughs> yeah. Walls are really slimy. We you find? Where'd you go? Just get an archive. Yeah, there's an archive. What? I've got slime off that. Yeah. I'm it's, hand and now I'm a wee bit spooked. It's only slime. Yeah, it's just the texture. It's cave slime, it's fine. Oh, uh, cave slime all over my jumper. <laughs> this is really cool. At the moment, we are maybe, what, about... 10 metres above sea level, 8 metres above sea level. Uh, these caves used to be sea caves because obviously the sea level was much higher. And as you can see here, we have a really, really smoothed out bottom edge of the cave, right, right up to the back, because that was smoothed out by the tides. This is really cool in here. We should do more caves. That is gross. <laughs> cave slime that Jolly put her hand in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
There's another postal. I walk across the front of the fact. The way that's cut down there, that looks like a fashion. I just touched the slime. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, that must have been something like that. Over there as well. So obviously Marion lived in this fantastic castle, but was very alone. In 1954, Mary Sandman and her mother moved over from Jura and moved in with Marion. That started a personal and professional relationship that lasted until Mary's death in 1995. Um, they really were quite a pair. They trudged the entire length of Argyle and um, took stock of um, every ancient stone, ev everything, everything of any historic value that was in the area. The pair published their first Mid-Argyle archaeological survey 